Gentlemen, let's also welcome Ms. C. Lakshmi, Managing Director, HR Lead, Accenture India. I have the privilege in inviting Mr. Ranjan Kumar Mohapatra, Chair Fiki HR Committee and Executive Director and Head Indian Oil Institute of Petroleum Management. Warm welcome to you, sir. I also invite Mr. Manoj Sharma, CHRO, RT Industries. A very warm welcome to you, sir. <laughs> Namaskar and good morning. Eminent dignitaries on the day, special invitees, distinguished dignitaries, business heads and heads of human resources, leaders, practitioners, professionals, and experts, all our distinguished delegates, respected members of the press and media, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to the inaugural session of the fourth edition of FIKI Innovation Summit. The summit has been driving some of the most value-adding conversations around the culture of innovation for the last four years and is curated, designed, and supported by the FIKI HR committee comprising of the senior HR leadership from major sectors of the economy. This event is positioned as one of the most coveted platforms for innovation enthusiasts and evangelists in India. The platform brings together the thought leaders, industry experts, and innovators from across sector to explore the latest trends, strategies, and share insights, case studies, with focused and deep dive deliberations on key ingredients of innovations attributing to its success. And today, ladies and gentlemen, the presence of eminent dignitaries is a source of inspiration for all of us. And I would like to request Mr. Ranjan Kumar Mohapatra to kindly do the honors of welcoming and honoring our very special guest, Ms. Nenalal Kidwai, Senior Advisor and Member of the Board, Rothschild and Co. India, with a green certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, the Green Certificate is a FIKI initiative wherein a grove of 10 trees will be planted in the Sundarbans National Park, West Bengal, in the name of our eminent dignitary. Once again, a warm welcome to you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate to have with us today Mr. Ranjan Mohapatra, Chair FIKI HR Committee, Executive Director and Head Indian Oil Institute of Petroleum Management, and former Director HR IOCL. And I would now like to invite you, sir, for the inaugural address. Can we once again put our hands together to welcome him? Very good morning to all of you. Our chief guest for today, Madam Nanalal Kidwaiji, just now, you must be wondering what we were discussing. I was telling her about this, uh, um, the plaque that we gave, the growth tree plaque, and uh, she told that it was started when she was the president of FIKI. So I think, I think we must really <laughs> give, us a, give her a real good acclaim for that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So th thank you very much that you are here despite your busy schedules and uh, my colleagues uh, in the HR committee, Lakshmi and uh, Manoj, uh, thank you very much for being here. All other guests who are present here, all other members who are uh, there from Fiki side, from our guests who will be speaking today, and of course the participants. So once again, a very good morning to all of you. Welcome to this uh, fabulous idea. In fact, uh, I must really compliment Fiki of course, to some extent to the HR committee, which thought about it to have this innovation summit. I think uh, we were all discussing that how innovation is extremely important for all of us to survive in this uh, changing world. I think uh, we all are talking about future of work, future of workplace, future of workforce, and then we know how innovation plays an important role. Personally speaking, I am extremely happy in the sense because Innovation has always been one of our core values in Indian oil. I think we had four core values, care, innovation, passion, and trust. And, and that has been running till 1999, since 1999, when we set our uh, core values. 
and that's how it has been an integral part of us. So, but by bringing innovation to the fore and by making people aware, making people sensitive to innovation, that's the purpose of this uh, summit. I'm extremely, again, thankful to all the participating companies who are, who are here. I mean, whose representatives are here. I can see a few of my colleagues from ONGC and other places uh, who, are, who are here, senior people. Of course, we have a blend of uh, young and old. We have a blend of, uh, I mean, we really have diversity in full flow here. So that's what is required if we have to bring innovation to the forefront. I think that's what is required. That is what is our desire by having this innovation summit. So uh, once again, welcome to this uh, innovation summit. I think we also have awards. There are many people who have uh, who had really participated in this competition. It went through a rigor and uh, there has been winners. I think we probably will be also celebrating uh, their wins and uh, at the end of this session, we have planned to have their presentations as well, so that at least we learn from each other. And uh, we also have a plan, as far as HR committee is concerned, we have a plan that all the presentations, all these uh, presentations which were there from innovation, uh, I mean, these competitions, in those who participated in the competition, we'll have a compendium of that and circulate it to people so that people are aware how innovation is being taken to the forefront. So once again, thank you very much and as has been uh, given to me, so I formally as, uh, as uh, chair, uh, chair of the HR committee of uh, uh, FIKI, I formally inaugurate this uh, particular conference and wish you all a be best journey, best of the journey during the whole day. Take the best out of it and innovate and innovate and innovate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for the inaugural address and also for setting the context for today's Innovation Summit. Ladies and gentlemen, today we also have the honor to have amongst us Ms. C. Lakshmi, Managing Director, Human Resources, Lead Accenture in India. And I have the privilege in inviting ma'am for the theme address. Let's once again put our hands together to welcome her. Thank you, and a very good morning to all of you. Thank you for inviting me here to uh, talk about creating a culture of innovation. It's just so wonderful to see people across, across the, from across different cities, the different organizations, different industries, but with a core passion for creating a culture of innovation all gathered here for us at the fourth, the fourth summit that Fiki HR is really organizing around the theme of innovation. So let me kind of just start by saying why I believe innovation has become an even bigger imperative. You know, research tells us that over the last five years, right, 2017 to 2022, disruption has increased probably about 200%. If you go back another five years, 2011 to 2016, that number was about 4%. So innovation is, is really an imperative for us to be able to turn around this disruption that is all around us and turn it around to our favor. You know, my organization, I represent Accenture and uh, we're famous for being great consultants, uh, the brightest brains around the world, but if I was to simplify this for each one of us, what does really innovation mean? It is really about applying some of these uh, breakthrough ideas for our clients, for our communities, for our people to actually deliver impact make a difference and, and we at Accenture, we work with several of our clients to leveraging some of our patients, I don't know if you know this, we have about 7,500 patents at Accenture and many more in, in the design that our teams are continuously working with our clients to kind of deliver differentiated impact so that they then have a competitive advantage and through that of course Accenture has a competitive advantage as well. So having been through this innovation journey at Accenture, if I was to kind of reflect and think about what it takes to really create a culture of uh, innovation, a few things come to mind. For sure, digital and technology is at the core. It is at the core of innovation, but that's not enough. Combining that with human capabilities is when you truly deliver 
impactful innovation. And if I was to again simplify this further to say, what are the three cornerstones for unleashing the human capabilities of innovation? I would say three things. The first one is to really create an innovation ecosystem or infrastructure. Yeah? Large organization, including mine, we've created this huge innovation hubs where people, our clients, our own people, can come together to co-innovate and create, you know, play with the latest technologies to come up with differentiated breakthrough ideas. But what is equally important and does not require a lot of investment is some of these micro-resources that all of us, irrespective of the size of the organization we are part of, can actually help create so that you can uh, you create a kind of culture of uh, coming up with ideas and planning and delivering. You can think of small incubators where people can play with technologies. You can come up with design thinking spaces where cross-functional, cross-discipline teams can actually come together and co-innovate. Or you can have idea thons where not only are you generating and nurturing new ideas, but also recognizing them. Uh, or of course, you can come to Accenture, but of course, this is not a sales pitch. Um, but what is most important is early on building out a platform where all of these innovative ideas are actually captured so that no matter where you are, which part of the organization you are, an innovation in marketing can be picked up by HR or an innovation in quality can be picked up in delivery. So it, it's really being, giving democratizing access to all of the ideas that then helps uh, create a, that unique infrastructure that is required. So that's really the first cornerstone. The second one, which you need to absolutely create in parallel, is this whole thing about creating, enabling a culture of innovation. And culture can be sometimes warm and fuzzy and duddy, so let me break this down for you. Um, the first thing is really about being very intentional and making disproportionate investments in training programs. Training programs so that your people can skill, upskill, reskill, because like I said, technology is at the core of innovation. And the second one, I was sharing with uh, Madam Kidwai earlier, earlier today, is around recognition. Not about recognition culture alone, but about having very specific recognition programs that help bring out the best ideas, bubble them up. Over the last, over a decade uh, at Accenture, we've been running this global uh, Value 360 rec programs that really recognize some of the best ideas that deliver value, 360 degree value, whether it be financial, whether it be uh, you know, measuring whether they're scalable across, what is the impact for the client, what is the impact for Accenture. And this last year, our people who get to vote on these ideas, by the way, had to vote for about 1,500 teams that put up their projects as the best project worthy of receiving a recognition for innovation. So it's important again to create those programs and infrastructure to not just recognize ideas that are successful and impactful, but also those that fail. Because that's when you create, a, a, that's, what, that's when you truly enable a culture of recognition. And the third aspect, very, very critical in my view, is that to ensure that your talent strategy, a key, one of the key components of the talent strategy is about growing Innovation leaders, leaders who nurture innovation in their teams, leaders who create those safe spaces for their team members to come up with innovation, sometimes experiment, sometimes succeed, sometimes fail. So that's kind of really the second cornerstone around enabling a culture of innovation. And the last and equally important one for me, how do you create a culture of innovation that is truly enduring? It's not a flash in the pan, it's not once in a year, it is an enduring culture. And for this, fostering a true culture of diversity is important. If you hire people who look the same, who come to the same background, same experience, you're gonna get similar ideas, similar solutions. Our research tells us that when you combine diversity with a true culture of equality, that's when people's ability and willingness to innovate increases many, many fold. Simply put, what does that mean? It means that when every person in your organization truly believes that they are valued for their unique perspectives, they are valued for their unique contributions, they are valued for their uh, 
experiences that are very, very unique and differentiated, mm -hmm. that's when you truly empower them to, to innovate and create value. So in closing, if I may say, I think we are in a, at a very exciting time. I mean, India's growth over the next decade, or what we are calling decade, uh, is going to be phenomenal, outstanding. I think we have a great opportunity to uh, reimagine, reinvent, and create a future that is um, anchored in technology or led by, fueled by technology, but is also human-led. And for that, we really need to think about, to get this right, we really need to think about creating a, a diverse culture where different people, different ideas can truly thrive and make the impossible possible. Thank you for listening to me. I look forward to listening to all your ideas through the course of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am, for that insightful theme address. Ladies and gentlemen, today for the keynote address, we have an inspiring personality amongst us, Ms. Nenaral Kidwai. Ms. Nenaral Kidwai is the Chairman Rothschild India, Senior Advisor Advent Private Equity, and a non-executive director on the boards of Holcim, Gland Pharma, UPL, and Biocon. She has been past president of the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FICI, and retired in December 2015 as the Executive Director on the Board of HSBC Asia Pacific and Chairman HSBC India, and in April 2018 as a non-executive director on the Global Board of Nestle. She chairs the Primary Markets Advisory Committee of SEBI. She's member of the Indo-ASEAN Business Council, the Army Group Insurance Funds, Indo-ASEAN Business Council, the Army Group Insurance Funds Investment and Advisory Committee, the Harvard Business School, South Asia Advisory Board, Standard Charters Bank's International Advisory Council, and the Mission Board of EQT Future Fund. An MBA from Harvard Business School, she is the recipient of several awards and honors, including the Padma Shri for the contribution to trade and industry. She's engaged with institutions in environment, water, and sanitation, and has authored three books, including the bestsellers, 30 Women Power. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, on that note, please welcome Ms. Nenanal Kidwai for the keynote address. Wow, I hardly expected such a long introduction. But let me start by saying I'm absolutely honored to be here. In my career as CEO of the bank at HSBC, and indeed when I was heading Morgan Stanley before that, I think the most important partnership I had in my top team was not my CFO, not my head of marketing, but indeed was my head of human resources. The most important co-pilot for me at the organization. So to be in your midst today as HR specialists, or yes, looking at innovation is for me an honor. So thank you for being here today. I was having what is probably one of the more interesting morning chats ever talking with Lakshmi, who is clearly one of the best leaders in this space and always, always full of ideas. So thank you, Lakshmi, for giving me that lovely morning burst. Mr. Mopatra, uh, who I have known in his role at IOC, uh, again, the leadership you provide at the FIKI committee uh, is clearly uh, a terrific service to industry. And wonderful to see you here, man. Uh, you, you come in such, in, with such an important sector and knowledge therein. So for me, today is special, an opportunity to kick off something which is very, very important. So I'd like to start by really saying and believing that we in India have a core of innovation. I've worked across geographies. I've led teams in countries, primarily in Asia uh, and the Asia Pacific. 
And I was always struck by how lateral thinking our people are and how frustrating it was for me to work in communities who were brilliant on execution, dare I say, better than us, but very narrow. You give them a job to be done, it will get done. But will they open their eyesight to looking laterally? Will they look at working in teams? Can they work across verticals? Uh, they do, but they need a lot more hand-holding than maybe our people do. We are gregarious by nature. We like working in teams. And I do believe we have this innate innovation, whether it's called jugar or whatever, but it's there in us. So let us, as leaders, enable this to thrive, guide it, because if we don't guide it, we all revert to working in verticals, not working across teams. And I think that is where firms like Accenture, who've understood the importance of putting these teams together across different disciplines, is when you create the next agenda. And hearing uh, the, uh, both Mr. Mohapatra and Lakshmi before me, you know, it brought back memories of, well, 17, 18 years ago, as when I took over as head of the bank in India, HSBC. We, diversity was a very new thing at the time. And uh, there was a diversity initiative starting globally. And I put my hand up to basically support it across Asia Pacific and India became an innovation hub. So I set up teams, which was really largely women in middle management downwards. We didn't have many, in fact, really any senior women, except my head of HR, who was actually responsible for helping to construct this. And these teams, I had them all report to my top team, which were all male, every single one of them. A team that's delivered to me in a traditional sort of professional organization, not handpicked by me at the time, although I had an opportunity to change them as I went along. And this team had to then run these women's groups, which were basically there on a diversity and inclusion agenda to come up with ideas. And from this came one of the most I would say interesting innovations in the banking sector in India, which was a five-day week. Now, how simple does that look? We are in a five-day week right now, but all banks at the time worked through a six-day week. And it's staring you in the face, but none of us had thought to change it. And it took these young women sitting in groups saying, what makes our organization more receptive, it was you know, more to gender, but actually it made it a more exciting environment for everyone. Why do we have to come on trains for three hours in Bombay uh, on a Saturday for a half day? And so what we do is, so you innovate, the teams decide how it'll work, uh, you move to a five-day week, you keep your branches open for customers on the sixth day, it's easy enough to work on a roster, and the great thing is the whole organization, because I basically said, look guys, this is an experiment. We have five day weeks elsewhere in the world. It's new in India. If productivity goes down, this gets shut down. So the whole team, men, women, everyone, wanting the five day week to work, productivity goes up. We actually tax on half an hour more to the day. And indeed, everyone was out to prove that this is going to work. And we had a huge saving on costs by keeping offices closed on Saturday on the one hand, and on the other, people just wanting to make this work. So I think the core of this is these ideas, they just sit there. And we don't even see it. I mean, you know, sitting at the top, we've been running this bank forever. Did it even strike us that, hey, by the way, you know, staring you in the face, do a five-day week. Even the Reserve Bank of India, I get calls to say, I mean, what is this nonsense? What have you started? My competition is laughing. This is some stupid idea of this, you know, first-time woman CEO. She thinks she can change the banking industry. And lo and behold, we attract talent. 
Two years later, every bank is on that five-day week. So m my learning very early was, of course, one, have a phenomenal HR team because they help craft it, but they cannot do it alone. You need the entire organization. You need your top team, your leadership driving the agenda. But setting the agenda, making sure we're thinking through it to make it succeed, the HR team is a very important co-pilot. And on the other, hear every idea. And Lakshmi said this, it's that enabling environment. Because those ideas are just sitting there, they're bubbling in there. There are people who can indeed lead you to what can be really uh, fabulous changes going forward. And another important take was it only works when you work in teams. The idea may have been a thought thrown up by an individual, but to make it work, to build the community that needs to make it happen, sometimes even to create that idea, uh, you do need uh, the teams. So how do we build this collaboration and team? And in fact, one of the biggest challenges for that has been the work from home thinking. So, and I'm all in favor of work from home, but in creating the work from home environment, let's not lose what that collaboration can be in terms of how you set the roster of who comes to office when and create the teams which don't just meet as a team within that vertical, but teams across verticals. So that the innovation, the spirit of working together, the understanding of the organization across where you work becomes important as well. So let's foster that innate innovation. I mean, we are at the end of the day, the, a country who builds the Mars orbiter. First attempt is a tribute to frugal innovation uh, across the world. Uh, the patents we have as a country, the way we, I mean, it's now 66,500 odd patents filed just in the year 21-22. So we innovate as a country. Can we ensure that we bring this innate culture of our Indianness into our organizations? And now, of course, Startup India and all that happens therein. Uh, if we can create in our organizations that we run this spirit and nurturing of innovation, we may not lose all we do that want to go out and do a startup. It's often people who are chafing at the reins, who are saying, hey, I'm not getting the breathing space. I'm not being heard. I have an idea. Can I create and make that idea work for me in the organization I work for, instead of running out to try and start and do something on my own? And it is really, therefore, these advancements in technology that we are seeing, the global interconnectedness. I think the dynamic market shifts which have enabled us, in fact, forcing us to look at change and how we can innovate as organizations. I think for many of us, large organizations, uh, you see the way an Accenture reinvents itself how does an IOC respond to this? How do what were largely very bureaucratic organizations letting up and enabling that lateral thinking rather than that very traditional approach to power, empowerment, reward? Uh, and for that change, we have to create, as Lakshmi rightly said, the ecosystem, the, the reward system the ability to allow people to think, to reward it, so that you can keep creating that uh, innovation. So a very important subject, I think one which must permeate every one of our organizations, the innovation that sits in our companies, whether big or small, whether ones that will go into patents, or make innovations happen at every level at which we work. And I was struck by a McKinsey report which talks of these leading innovating organizations and some of those spaces they mention. So first and foremost, believe and value. So that's 
the eco culture of it. We have to believe in it, we have to value it, and then you frame and champion it. No matter what you do, you need the internal champions, external champions, even as you frame the issue. And then the signaling and symbolizing, the reward system. How do you, as a leader, visit? Do you make sure that your CEO, your top teams go visit innovation hubs? You show the importance of that particular uh, initiative, however it is framed in the organization. So that's signaling, that's symbolizing. And then you showcase the outcomes, the reward. How do you actually make it a ritual that people can celebrate those successes? And very, very important, how do you shield? You empower, but how do you shield those very failures that will happen? You, no matter what we do, we will fail. And in those failures are lessons of learning. So the toleration for failure is traditionally, we all understand it, but we still don't tolerate it well, particularly in large companies. And we have to then understand that you cannot innovate without failure. So how do you recognize a failure, ensure that it doesn't happen again, share the lessons, and make sure that the, the team or the person that has taken it forward is not made to suffer for it. Indeed, to understand and failure at every level is as much an individual thing. I have failed. I have to live with that failure. And no matter what the organization may say, it's still something that concerns me. How do you help the individual to understand that this failure may lead to the next? How do we share lessons of failure that have resulted in success? What to do, what not to do, what not to thrust under the carpet? So looking at this nourishing of innovation, there's so much that we need to change in the culture of our organizations. And it goes beyond lip service. It has to be about leading from the top and leading at every level of management. People leave companies because of poor leadership, not because of a bad CEO, but because their direct manager was a bully, did not get it, was not there for them, right? So that leadership that of innovation has to permeate the organization at every level. So how do we create these agents of change at every level? And if you look at the attrition, most organizations will you know, yes, you have the leaky pipeline for women, but at most organizations, it's in the first five years. So it's those managers who are managing the young that come in, the ones that are still trying to stabilize, think through what they like and love, that how do you create that management and leadership is going to be critical in terms of the way the culture of the organization is per fully permeated with this uh, innovation culture. So a big job, one which for you is not just what you implement if you are indeed the HR specialist, but how you rally the troops, how you rally the managers, how you rally those that won't change, and it's often right at the top to drive this change. Uh, my biggest learning when I put together those groups was not so much that these young women had an issue, but my direct team of leaders, the men who had been in banking for the last 30 years, how were they going to change? And some of them had the grace to say that this exercise was one of their biggest learnings, to come back with ideas from young people who were brave enough to sometimes give what may have been stupid ideas, but every idea had a value. And no idea was stupid until it was discussed, framed, rejected, accepted, and understood. So that learning for each of us at every level is important and a continuous reminder. So I'll end with a very relevant thought by Ken Robinson. The role of creative leaders is not to have all the ideas, is to create a culture everyone can have ideas and feel 
that they are valued. So on that note, thank you all for being part of this extraordinary journey, and I wish you a fruitful and inspiring Innovation Summit. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am, for that insightful keynote address. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite for the concluding remarks, Mr. Manoj Sharma, CHRO, RT Industries. Good morning to all of you. And uh, what a day to begin, you know, we just heard uh, Mr. Mahapatra opened the session and talked about the IOC journey and the, how innovation is core to it. And it's really heartening to know, sir. And when it came to Lakshmi, I think Lakshmi really brought out the whole context of today's uh, summit. And uh, she talked about the ecosystem and how that ecosystem to be supported from the culture and the recognition point of view and what it needs for a each and every individual to really thrive in that environment. So thank you so much for bringing that aspect, uh, Lakshmi. And, uh, and uh, nothing I can talk about Madam Kidwai, like she has really, really created the whole uh, aspect of innovation and her own uh, experience with respect to the banking uh, sector and which led to five day week. <laughs> it's very heartening to know that ma'am and uh, coming from your experience and then later on with respect to the whole ecosystem of uh, uh, innovation and what it takes to support that ecosystem. And beautifully the, the, the resistance and the people who are not able to really mature to that ecosystem, how we can support them as well. So thank you so much for bringing very diverse ideas and what it needs for the various organization and the people sitting here to take it from this uh, discussion. So thank you so much. Uh, and uh, on behalf of uh, Fiki, really thank Madam for your presence here today. And uh, we look forward for more guidance from you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to each one of you for being here and uh, uh, taking note of various discussions which will happen throughout the day. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our inaugural session. We would request Ms. Nena and Mr. Ranjan to kindly stay back for the felicitations of the HR Innovation Award. Other dignitaries to kindly take their seats in the front row. I would also like to invite Mr. R. Mukundan, MD and CEO of Tata Chemicals Limited, to kindly join us on the days for the award presentation. And I also invite Ms. Anuradha Razdan, co-chair FIKI HR committee, to kindly join us on the stage for the award felicitations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to welcome Mr. Mukundan and Ms. Anuradha Razdan. I would uh, request Ms. Nena and Mr. Raj Ranjan to kindly stay back on the stage, please. So ladies and gentlemen, with the Innovation Summit in the background, this year we are introducing the HR Innovation Awards to recognize and celebrate innovations in HR space across three categories of organization, that is mature, evolving, and emerging. All the participants have participations have gone through two levels of rigorous evaluation process. First by the interim jury made of senior leaders from industry and each application was reviewed by at least two accessors independently. Shortlisted applicants were then invited for the final presentation round with the grand jury to decide winners and the runners up in each category. Ladies and gentlemen, we would now like to acknowledge the eminent jury members. The jury chair, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, former chief scientist at WHO chairperson, MS Swaminathan Research Foundation. 
Jury member, Mr. Rajiv Dubey. Principal advisor, Mahindra and Mahindra Limited. Thanks to you. Jury member, Mr. Ranjan Banerjee. Dean and Professor of Marketing, Bitsong. And also the jury member, Mr. Rajesh Chandwani, Associate Professor of HRM, IIM, and the Bar. We thank the jury members for going through this rigorous protocol, methodology, and the efforts of selecting our winners. And I would now like to request Ms. Nena Lord Kidbai and Mr. R. Mukundan to kindly do the honors of giving away the awards. We begin the award presentation with the mature category. And the winner for this category is LT Technology Services. At LTTS, the company nurtures an innovation focused mindset reflected in their annual technology events, including tech GM and tech expression and portfolio of over 1,000 patentable ideas from their engineers. The company's innovative ways cut across industries and offer its engineers a perfect environment to ideate and excel. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the winners of the mature category l and Technology Services. Congratulations to you. And ladies and gentlemen, for this category, the mature category, the runners-up are the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, ONGC. The energy transition taking place in the world over, coupled with the sudden outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, accelerated the pace of realigning ONGC's learning and development offerings in line with the future of work. Its virtual L&D programs coupled with other on-site training initiatives are paving the way to building a leadership pipeline that is future ready. Maharatna ONGC is being recognized for the strategic and innovative initiatives undertaken towards realigning their learning and develop offerings in line with the impending energy transition. So let's put our hands together for our runner-ups of the mature category, the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, ONGC. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we move to the next category, which is the evolving category. And the winner for this category are ITC Personal Care Business. <laughs> Epic is a 100-day team-based and mobile engaged challenge with incentives team to earn points by walking at least 10,000 steps a day, participating in daily quiz on holistic well-being and sharing their journey through photos and videos on a private social network. The challenge was inclusive and covered everyone in the business across hierarchies. So let's put our hands together for the winners of the evolving category, the ITC personal care business. Congratulations. And ladies and gentlemen, the runners-up for the evolving category are Aarti Industries. Aarti, as an organization, crafted a unique intervention metamorphosis that emerged as an ingenious endeavor aimed at establishing a profound connection with the executive family by directly addressing their challenges and impediments. This groundbreaking event was marked as a unique instance of CHRO directly engaged with such a large audience and took personal responsibility for resolving unworkability on the spot. <clears throat> so ladies and gentlemen, once again, a round of applause for the runners-up of the evolving category, Aarti Industries. Moving on to the next category, which is the emerging category, the winners of this are 
India Mortgage Guarantee Corporation. As part of IMGC's employee value proposing proposition strategy, the Idea Box initiative was launched to drive innovation and employee development within the organization. The initiative empowered all employees to contribute meaningfully towards the organization's success by submitting their ideas and suggestions for improving its work processes and overall efficiency. So let's once again put our hands together for the winners of the emerging category, India Mortgage Guarantee Corporation. Congratulations. And the runners up for this category are RM Phosphates and Chemicals Limited. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for the runners up, RM Phosphates and Chemicals Limited. Their initiative focused on balancing employees' mental, physical, sociological well-being with professional skills, training with personalized coaching, and the mentoring programs. A round of applause for the runners-up RM Phosphates and Chemicals Limited. Thank you and congratulations to all the winners and I take this opportunity to thank our dignitaries for kindly doing the honours of giving away the awards. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am. And I would request Mr. Mukundan and Ms. Anuradha Razdan to kindly stay back for the next session.